Welcome back everyone to a new video and today we're going to be making histamine the essence of allergies. So you've most likely heard of histamine and this is because histamine is a main cause of allergic reactions. Well it's not really a cause per se. What happens when your body detects an allergen, your body then releases histamine saying hey there's a foreign invader we need to take care of this and then that causes the allergic response. So really the histamine is just a middleman saying hey this is an allergen that's why it's the essence of allergies. And well that's why we also use drugs called antihistamines things like Benadryl, um, hat man drug that people use to get high. I, why would anyone do that? That's That just sounds awful. Anyway, these antihistamines block histamine, right? So if you're having a lot of allergies and you block the histamine, well, there's nothing telling your body saying, hey, we need to have an allergic response. Now, like I say in all my neurotransmitter videos, this is highly simplified. Most of these neurotransmitters have multiple functions, right? Because your body is trying to be as efficient as possible, right? So neurotransmitters usually have multiple functions because if it's already making a neurotransmitter, you might as well have it do multiple things instead of just one thing. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and make the essence of allergies. Start the histamine synthesis, we're gonna need acetophenone. This is gonna be um, our high boiling point ketone catalyst. If you see my serotonin videos, then you know exactly what we're going to be doing here. Um, but first, I'm gonna give this a redistillation because it's still full of indoles, which makes it smell awful. And I want some nice pure acetophenone, so we're gonna do a distillation here. So as you can see, our acetophenone is not supposed to be that color. A nice dehydrated piss yellow is what that is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crank the heat up and uh, distill it over. Distillation's done for the most part, and there's our acetophenone down there. I don't think it's actually yellow, but for some reason, like at the surface, it looks yellow. And down there, it looks clear. So uh, yeah, I'll wait for this to all cool down. Okay, here's our acetophenone, and it froze overnight. Part of it does look a little bit yellow, but then a lot of it looks pretty good. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and toss it into here, which is hot, and uh, melt it back down to a liquid. I don't know if you can see, but the crystals of acetophenone in there are beautiful. And it doesn't really pop up very good on camera, but in person, there are some beautiful crystals. Okay, here's our final distilled acetophenone. You see it's slightly off in color, but it's good enough for our purposes. So to make our histamine, we're gonna start with L-histidine. Um, this is pretty much just an amino acid. And uh, well, if it's decarboxylated, it will turn into histamine. As you can see how similar the molecules are. So this is going to be our starting material because it's extremely cheap and uh, a fairly easy conversion. But first to this 250 milliliter round bottom flask, I'm going to start off by adding 20 grams of our L-histidine. It's this nice white crystalline powder. Now on top of that, I'm going to add 200 milliliters of acetophenone. Now to this flask, I'm also gonna add a stir bar. Okay, now we're gonna need some argon to flush our reaction because, well, it is gonna be air sensitive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this simple party balloon, put it over my argon tank. I don't have a regulator for this because the regulator is like, I don't know, $90, so. I'll just uh, stick to using balloons. Okay, there we go. We got our balloon of argon. All right, now I'm going to flush our reaction here. Got a little space open at the bottom so the argon can kind of flush through. But our argon also is denser than air. It should kind of displace the air in there a bit. So now we just have to apply high heat. We're trying to aim for this reaction to get to around 150 to 165 degrees. Um, it'll pretty much maintain itself here with this reflux we got going. Um, but anyway, so in this, we're going to be doing a ketone catalyzed decarboxylation. Before that, it's also going to require some high temperatures to push that decarboxylation along. So you may ask, what are we exactly doing here in this reaction? So we're going to be doing a decarboxylation reaction, like I mentioned earlier. And this is essentially just taking this carboxylic acid hanging off our L-histidine molecule and removing it using heat. But heat alone doesn't always guarantee a good decarboxylation. Some molecules, depending on their structure, will decarboxylate spontaneously at room temperature. Some will decarboxylate like 100 C, and the other ones will decarboxylate at you know 200 C plus at a very slow rate. Um, and that's what L-histine would do. So if you heat it up, it would decarboxylate, but it would just start tarring and everything else because it needs such a high temperature. So instead we're doing a ketone catalyzed decarboxylation and that's why we're using our acetophenone. Our acetophenone is a solvent and a catalyst in one. But the basic idea behind this is that our acetophenone will form an imine with our molecule of L-histidine. And essentially when this imine forms, it makes the decarboxylation happen much more readily, right? 
and then it's a catalyst because in the end, a little bit of hydrolysis will remove that imine, forming the free histamine, and then we get our acetophenone back. So uh, let's hope this goes smooth. There's one key feature I forgot, and that is to turn on strong stirring. Beautiful. We're definitely starting to get up to temp because it's starting to reflux. But that's actually not the acetophenone refluxing. Because of the imine formation, we're forming a molecule of water. And uh, well, that's what is refluxing right now. You hear that because the water comes up, falls back down, and uh, boils away. Did I also mention that we have to leave this for pretty much like 30 to 40 hours? Yeah. But since we have to leave it for such a long time, I got this too, which I can't leave. Um, I'm probably gonna have to put it out here. I'll clear this out. Um, and put it out here so, you know, in case it decides to catch fire, it won't burn down my shop. Um, so, yeah. Out here, there's nothing to really burn. It's just concrete. And it's rained all day, so. Now, this is a masterpiece. I put this aluminum sheet on the top here in case it does rain. It's not supposed to rain, but in case it does, I don't want it to destroy my hot plates. So, I uh, just put this piece of aluminum over top and uh, have it weighed down. So, yeah. And this is very stable, so I'm not worried about wind or anything taking it or it falling. So, <laughs> it works. Okay, so here's our finished reaction mixture. It's been going for approximately 36 hours. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Some of the water came out. Um, now, there's this compound on the top here that has like crystallized right above the reflux point. It, I have no clue what that is. Maybe free base histamine that went up. I, I I don't know. Um, but let's start processing this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is vacuum filtrate it. Okay, so while we're vacuum filtrating, I know it's kind of loud, I'm going to uh, collect these crystals that formed in the condenser, and some were in the balloon here. So this substance gets weird. Now watch what happens when we uh, just set it on the hot plate to heat up right does it melt what's it what's it gonna do you know so pretty much this substance doesn't melt but rather it sublimes look at it see it just disappearing right there it's not actually turning into a liquid um that's not histamine so what is it i have no earthly idea god i wish i had an nmr okay but anyway we got our nice filtrate here I wouldn't call it nice, it's very uh, tarry looking. And our flask definitely has some tar that was left behind in it. So let's begin uh, processing this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is add 20 milliliters of distilled water. And give that a good little swirl. Okay, now I'm gonna add 20 milliliters of 31% hydrochloric acid. And this should form the hydrochloride salt of our imine here. And you see it does form a quite nasty looking emulsion type deal. And then what I'm going to do is now move this to heat. So our goal now is to do our hydrolysis step where the acid will cause the imine to pretty much fall apart, forming our histamine and then our acetophenone. We will go ahead and turn up heat, turn on some stirring, and we'll let that heat up and react. Yeah, I'm going to let this react for probably about 30 minutes or so. Right, now I'm going to transfer the contents of this flask into our separatory funnel here. Hey, right, so it's really hard to tell, but there is two layers, so I'm going to go ahead and separate it. I think the bottom one is our aqueous layer. Um, not really 100% full show on that. There we go, there's our bottom layer, which definitely looks like our aqueous layer. So in this beaker right now should contain uh, water and our histamine dihydrochloride, which is our essence of allergies. So let's go ahead and purify this down. Okay, so to this flask here, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in our histamine dihydrochloride solution. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on strong heating and distill this solution. So it's not really necessary to distill it, right? It's just water and HCl. We can just boil that off, um, but there's HCl in it, so I don't wanna, you know, gas the place. So I'm just gonna do a you know, little distillation. Okay, after distilling down, this is what we have. Maybe hard to see in there. We've got crystals, but on the top, there's like this tar type deal. And then below that, it's, uh, there's crystals in there. It's like crystalline. You might be able to hear it crackle. It's kind of hard to see it in the flask. But anyway, so uh, to purify this, we're gonna go ahead and do a recrystallization. Okay, so to start off our recrystallization, I'm gonna go ahead and add 
50 milliliters of 95% ethanol into the flask. Now we have a saturated solution of uh, histamine dihydrochloride in ethanol. Do our recrystallization. All I'm going to do is now pour our ethanol into this recrystallizing dish. Hold on, you can't even see it. Now, since this is a saturated hot solution, what should happen is, is as it cools down, our histamine will no longer be soluble and crash out. And I got it up there in the freezer now, and that should finish the recrystallization. Okay, right, so next day here, it, it's crystallized a little bit. You may be able to see some crystals in there, but it's not crystallizing like it should. I have no clue why, but I mean, you can see how concentrated that solution is. That thing is, yeah. But we go to our flask over here. This thing, the residuals in it crystallized beautifully. Look at all those crystals. That's the residuals. So why did that crystallize? I even took some of the seed crystals out of here and threw it in there and nothing. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and boil this down to dryness to get a hard crystal thing, break it up, and then just probably just wash it. And turn on mild heating just to slowly evaporate it down. Okay, so we got our crystals. Kind of our crystals. It just looks like actual diarrhea, but you can see how it's crystal-like. And yeah, so we're just trying to wash out all that nasty brown color. Okay, after vacuuming down, this is what we have. This nice whitish powder. There's a little bit of brownness left. Um, I didn't record it, but I did wash it with some 91% isopropanol, and that seemed to clear it up nicely. You can see. Down our flask there, we got some pretty icky water. No, not water, alcohol solution. Anyway, so I'm gonna finish drying this because it is still a little bit wet. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and powderize it and then we'll check our yield. But yeah, this is looking very good. Nice white powder like it should be. Okay, here's our final product, our histamine dihydrochloride. It's a nice white to off white powder, which is exactly what uh, literature and chemical companies um, state their histamine dihydrochloride as. I'm a white to an off-white powder. So, beautiful. There it is, let's weigh it out and get our yield. Okay, so our final yield was 5.32 grams. Um, it's all right yields. We lost most of it in the solvent washing steps, right? Because we had to wash it so many times to get a nice, fine white powder. I mean, I really had to wash it. So, that's where we lost most of our product, but there it is, histamine dihydrochloride, aka the essence of allergies okay now as a final measure let's do a melting point test all right so i'm going to take our melting point tube and load it up with our histamine dihydrochloride okay there's our melting point tube okay so let's go ahead and load up our automatic melting point apparatus apparatus is locked and loaded so i'm going to go ahead and do manual mode so you may be asking why are we doing manual mode well i'm doing manual mode because the melting point of um, histamine dihydrochloride is around 250 degrees celsius right so that's very high at that point the histamine dihydrochloride is probably going to start decomposing as it melts and uh, that's an issue for the automatic function because it's just the way it works in there it just doesn't work that way too well so instead i'm going to do manual mode all right well ignore the luminosity it's going crazy for some reason i'll have to see what's wrong with that but anyway um i don't know if you can see in there yeah this thing sucks for camera viewing but it is melted yeah, it's, it's hard to see. I'll just take it out. Ooh, as you can see, ooh, it did melt there at 245 degrees Celsius, which is fairly close. Um, that's the lower end of the range. Uh, the range of histamine dihydrochloride melting point is 249 to like 250. So, right, 245 to uh, 250, somewhere around there. And yeah, like I said, it did start decomposing, which I did expect. So there we go. It is, in fact, our histamine dihydrochloride. And of course, what people always ask in my neurotransmitter videos is what happens if you ingest it? Well, with histamine, nothing really too much will happen. You actually probably eat histamine on a daily basis, but too much of it can cause sickness, such as diarrhea, vomiting, and headaches. But on a day-to-day -day basis, things you eat have histamine in it because a lot of things contain histidine, right, which is an amino acid, very common in food products. And if there's some bacteria around, that bacteria can convert the histidine into histamine. But the issue becomes if you let your food sit out on the counter too long and too much bacteria accumulate, well, it's going to turn a lot more of this histidine into histamine. And then you consume that histamine. And too much histamine causes the symptoms I talked about. Anyway, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, that's the essence of allergies. And bye.